love is this. So, how y'all doing? Great, great. Um, what are you doing sitting like that? <laughs> that is weird. It's very snaky. <laughs> I know. Um, so when you go, uh, when you come up for communion, one is good luck. Um, and then two, if you stop at the baptismal font and get bit by that snake, you look to this snake and you will be saved. See? Ah. So everybody that is here, close your eyes and then raise your hand if you have previously read the scripture for today. All right, you may open your eyes. Good job, everybody. Well done. So you kind of know what I'm talking about. So what, um, where did you see God at work in the world this week? A large them fell during the storm and nobody got hurt. You know, really happened. Oh, good. The treatment of damage to cars. Right in the I didn't even hear the storm. Oh, my goodness. I know, I was sleeping. So, yeah. Wow. Well, good. I'm glad no, no one got hurt. Yes. Who else? Sure. So God, this week when I was driving, this week trying to make a little bit of a conscious effort, but it wasn't me. When people were cutting me off or people need to get in, I was like, okay, you go. Oh, nice. And I didn't care. Really? It was very strange. Yeah. I might try that this week. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Good job. Yeah. What else? Nothing? Yes, fruit. Bill and I were paddling yesterday in the canals around the area and when we were going through there's all these live birds and this wildlife and it was just beautiful. Very cool. I love like just the calmness of that, even though it was windy and all that, like birds flying in the wind is so fun. Yes. That peace, right? Anybody else have a God moment this week they want to share? Uh, yes, I Julie. just enjoyed the sunshine, just the blue sky. And the it is gorgeous, yeah. The sky was so blue this week. It, it, it really was. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it, yes, it really was. I think my, I had a bunch of them this week, but the one that, um, I was so stoked after Bible study on Thursday. Like, we took the gospel lesson first that you will hear today, which is one we hear over and over and over again, and we picked it apart, and we really, like, challenged some of our held knowledge about it. And so it was just fun. It was, so, if you want to come to Bible study on Thursday morning at 9 o'clock, please join us over at Grounds of Grace on University Boulevard. It's amazing. If you know anything, you can come. If you know nothing, you can come. If you know it all, you can come. <laughs> so there, and we will tell, teach you that you don't know it all. Ha ha ha. But it is good to be with you all today. We are going to hear uh, snake stories today. So for those of you out in the world listening to us and being with us virtually, we are in a snake formation in our chairs today for our Lenten season of Sunday formations. And um, last week was our heart, this week is our serpent, which also the Bible study group got when I said, so what do you think the chairs will look like this week? And they knew it ahead of time, so that was fun. Anywho, there are a few other announcements. So we have our book study, chapter five, right after worship today. Uh, Wednesday, we have our midweek Lenten service and soup at 6.11. We will start serving, serving our soup and bread. And this week, we are talking about shoes. And we want to invite you to bring any of your old shoes that you want to get rid of, that are still decent enough to walk in, to donate them on Wednesday night that we can take with us to our next sock drop which will be next Sunday at 11 o'clock down at Bruce Park, along with our 
community meal, our faith table. And we're, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. We're asking people to bring stuff. And so you can sign up back there. What is not on there is this, we're making corned beef sandwiches. Those are already taken care of and people have signed up for those. But we need sauerkraut, cold slaw or broccoli slaw, individual bags of chips or snacks, Thousand Island dressing, water, lemonade, that kind of thing. See Teresa for more if you have questions. And then Saturday, we are, we are going to do one of the prayer walk cleanups in, in um, the city of Jacksonville. And so we have to decide which one we're going to do. If we're going to do it together or if we're going to... So we'll talk about that after worship today as well at our book study. A uh, week from this coming Thursday on the 21st is our thirst. Third Thursday thirst for our young professional group over at Seven Bridges. And then on March 24th, it's Palm Sunday already. I know. Wonder what the chairs will look like that day. <laughs> Woo. Anyway, <coughs> this is the Sunday that we talk about both the Old Testament and the New Testament. We're going to talk about the book of Numbers today, which is so fun and so filled with so many lovely 613 laws, commands from God. So with that, let us stand as weary travelers on this Sunday morning and sing. Weary travelers, beat down from the storms that you have
belief. I believe that God has created me together with all the living spirits. God daily and abundantly provides for me. We confess that Jesus is Lord. He has redeemed and freed us so that we may belong all together. How is this possible when we are who we are? We believe because the Holy Spirit calls us. Called, gathered, enlightened, and made holy, we praise God. This is most certainly true. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in the snares of sin and cannot break free. We hurt resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurt grow into hatred. For all these things, and for sins only you know, forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is the flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to you, to us. Break every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Christ. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you.
a reading from Numbers. From Mount Hor, the Israelites set out by the way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they beat the people, so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent beat someone, that person would look at the serpent of bronze. <coughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. So the one verse I'm not going to preach on is John 3.16. <laughs> so when we read this, and if we read it without the book of Numbers, <clears throat> we'd be like, why is he talking about a servant of Moses? That was a really long time ago. And so the gospel writer of John actually takes a story that the people know and, sat and, and tells it in a story that just like this happened, so all of those good Jewish folks would go, oh yeah, I remember that story. We were complaining. And uh, yeah, and God didn't like that we were complaining. So he sent a bunch of snakes to bite us and kill us. <laughs> Whew, well, we could get off on that one too. But um, yeah, that's crazy. So they're out in the wilderness. And um, they're getting manna from heaven because they were hungry. But they're really griping a bit and aren't, don't see where God is sending them. They're getting a, a little bit tired of waiting for this promised land that Moses keeps saying they're going to. And so then God sends snakes and, and kills some of the people. 
But then Moses is like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. And God goes, okay, here's what you're going to do. You're going to make this serpent. You're going to put it on a pole. And they'll probably still get bit. But they can look to that serpent and live. Okay, so it got a little better. And so then John, he comes in and he says, just like that, look to the cross and live. Look to Christ and live. End of story. That's what we're supposed to do. Not the end of the story. How are we to take this text today and apply it to where we are today? So just before this story, in the Gospel of John, Nicodemus, the synagogue guy, has come to Jesus at, at dark and has said, I don't get it. You're not who, you just can't be. Help me understand how you're the Son of God. And so Jesus sets out to explain it, and then there's this transition, and then Jesus uses the example with Nicodemus and says, just as he, he includes everyone now and not just Nicodemus, it's all plural from here on out. Just as Moses did this, so must I do this for you as that last lifting up and looking and a place to look to live. So then we could get wrapped up in, well, I do good, I'm in the light. Well, they do bad, they're in the dark, which is the rest of that story from 18 on. Those who believe in him are not condemned, and those who believe, do not believe, are already condemned. So what's the point? And then he goes on to, to balance that light and darkness. And if we don't do the work that God has called us to, and don't look to God for hope in our faith, then we have chosen to live in the darkness of our world. So once again, it's Lent, and it's a little bit like re we're supposed to be repentant, and we're supposed to be self-reflective <coughs> of the things in our life that we don't do very well for others. We're supposed to be reminded in these scriptures that God has already woven his love into the world in Christ. And so as we turn from these passages to harder texts through Good Friday, it invites us in to actually pay attention to how we treat one another, how we treat the world. I have a meme on my Facebook that says, if God did not send Christ into the world to condemn it, what makes you think he sent you? And we are so good at condemning things that we don't like. I'm really proud of you for your patience this week with driving. Really, I mean, that's like, that is huge because as we have talked about, I do that too, right? So I got to hear that as gospel in my ear. Like, oh, yeah, oh, I do that too. Or how do I look at people as I'm driving around? How do I see those who may have more than I do, or don't have as much as I do, or don't look like me, or act like me, or go to church, or go to the wrong church, or shop at the wrong grocery store, or the list goes on. How do we live in the light? We look to the cross just as the, the people of Moses looked at the serpent to live. We have to look to Christ. So I, I have a whiteboard on my, in my kitchen, on my closet door, and I wrote my word of the year up there. And then at the bottom, I wrote prayer and persistence. And every time this week, well, I was at home and saw my board. And, and something wasn't like feeling right or going right. I remembered prayer and persistence. Bring it to God. Leave it with God. And be persistent in always walking forward. So it's that turn. Because, you know, sometimes as a pastor, 
we're like, yeah, we got this Jesus thing down, and we don't really, we preach a lot of it, but we don't always turn to God in prayer. I'll just claim it. I don't always turn to God in prayer when I should. I won't make my other pastors look bad. And I think, yeah, that's my Sunday thing, or that's for Thursday, or, you know, and this week I intentionally decided, like you did, that I would pray. And I would be persistent in what I was doing for the good of my world. And I'm telling you, people, it was a really good week. It was an amazing week. Yes, there are still things that went wrong, and there were bumps and bruises and hills and valleys. But all in all, giving those up in prayer was very freeing. Very freeing. How do we live our lives free of darkness and walk in the light? How do we look to the cross and lift that in our world so that we are reminded whose we are, who God is in our lives, and how we can affect the world in positive ways through accompaniment and through love and through kindness. As our book for our book study is, we love God, we love our neighbor, and we include everybody. That is what we are called to do. And when it gets hard, we look to the cross and we will live. That is where our faith is. That is where our hope is. Because of Easter morning.
God the Father. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. This is most certainly true. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. This is most certainly true. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. This is most certainly true. Amen. You may be seated for our prayers. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and the world in need. Creating God, your love enlivens. Restore balance to the earth's fragile habitats. Prefer, preserve wilderness lands, rainforests, and wildlife. Cleanse oceans and rivers. Make us good stewards of the earth. Hear us, O God. Merciful God. Your love needs. Care tenderly for all whose loved ones are suffering in any way. Strengthen health care workers, first responders and caregivers. Relieve all who live with chronic illness and pain. Hear us, O God. We must great. Incarnate God, your love enlightens. Open our hearts and minds to fresh understandings of our faith. Deepen our love for you and for one another. Teach us to pray for our enemies. Hear us, O God. Your Abiding God, your love saves. As we hold our loved ones close, we lift to you the names of those who are on our heart today. We give thanks for your promise that we also will be new in you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. <laughs>
Jesus, you are the bread of life and the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. You called your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. That renewed in the gift of baptism, we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Given for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you. This is the body of Christ given for you. The body of Christ given for you.
praise now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, at this table we have tasted your immeasurable grace. As grains of wheat are gathered into one bread, now make us one loaf to feed the world. In the name of Jesus, the bread of life. Beloved, we are God's own people, wholly washed and renewed. God bless you and keep you and shower you with mercy, fill you with courage and give you peace. Amen. Amen. the desert looked to the bronze serpent 
and they were saved. With faith, we look to Jesus on the cross, and we are saved. Now, go reflect the healing light of the cross onto our broken world. We will. Thanks be to God. Let the light